Good morning, babies! It's the morning of my surgery. It is currently 5.35 a.m. We have to leave the house at 6. Um, I have my surgery outfit laid out. Just my white cami, my oopsie, my sweatpants, my slides, and then my zip-up jacket. So about to take my makeup off because I was up all night filming and I was editing. I have a new video coming out with Kat and Yanni. With Kat and Bedell and Yanni Rose here on YouTube. So I'm going to be giving away. So it is um, a back to school giveaway video. I wanted to just work <laughs> to kind of kill the time. You know, work doesn't stop no matter what you're doing. So let me take my makeup off, jump in the shower, brush my teeth, and then put my glasses on and put my outfit on. And I will talk to you guys more on the way there. Okay, you guys. So I have showered with my Hypoclins. Um, I have on a cami underneath this and just my zip up jacket, my Victoria's Secret pink sweatpants, and then my pink slides. Um, this is surgery day. <laughs> Um, I'm going to just kind of go over everything, make sure I have everything, have my driver's license, have my entire wallet, have my keys, have my camera, I have my phone. My phone is charged to 91%, but I'm bringing my phone charger. We are going to be there a bit early, so that's always good. Okay, you guys, we are in the car, We're headed to the hospital. Hey guys, so we stopped at McDonald's. My dad wanted something to eat. Um, I haven't eaten or had anything to drink since a little bit before um, midnight, so I was like, I'm just gonna set y'all there. I was like really thirsty at first, but now I'm not thirsty anymore. And then I um, got a little hungry. But now my stomach is honestly in knots. I've never felt this before. <laughs> my stomach is like, it feels like this. <laughs> oh, sorry. They're doing remodeling. The uh, dining room is closed. Oh. Get your phone. Get your camera. Okay, Jokey. You gonna go through the drive through Yeah. Oh, okay. How do you feel, Dad? I, I'm actually pretty comfortable. I'm concerned, of course, but I, I'm, I'm comfortable. <laughs> Good. Feel confident. She's a good doctor. Yes, she is. Yes, she is. She's a very, very good doctor. So, so we make sure we talk to her and uh, get, get any loose ends tied up. And make sure it's a, you know, the thing I'm most concerned about is that it's a safe surgery. That's, that's the primary concern. She's an experienced doctor, so I don't don't have any really deep concerns about it. But it's something we definitely got to talk to her about. It's something I want to talk to her about first. Okay. We got here really early. We got here very early. So uh, we're about to go in, and um, Dad brought a book. If I have any downtime, I'll read as well. I have um, books on my phone. I read on my Kindle. So, uh, I don't really, I don't feel like it's happening, but it's definitely happening. Like in the next few hours, this process will have officially, I guess, started, or I don't know the correct terminology for it, but we're about to get started. Health 
center. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm gonna wait for dad. Daddy oh. And here I am in all of my glory. <laughs> It says automatic. So it like doesn't open automatically if I press a button. We're going to 550. Thank you. Hmm. This is cool. Okay, so my clothes have to go in this bag, and then I have to put this gown on, the socks on, and then... So this is just her midline, Ashley. Change your clothes, Sarah. Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Now let's have you hop up on the bed. Kind of a bit, huh? This one's a little bit lower, mm -hmm. right? So we probably talked about this. This one's still going to be a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. All right. So any questions, comments, concerns? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> you ready for this, huh? I'm ready. Okay, cool. Well, you are marked. So um, the only thing left, they'll start your IV, mm -hmm. and then uh, you'll be ready to go into the operating room. Okay. You guys, it's happening. <laughs> I got marked. Um, you can't really see it, but... I got marked and um, took my vitals. I took a couple of Tylenol. Um, I couldn't eat or drink anything, so I had to just drink enough water for it to go down. Unfortunately, I feel like it's a little stuck right here. <sighs> I'm kind of panicking. <laughs> I feel like the Tylenol is like stuck right here. <sighs> Hi, Jason. <laughs> Hi, Ashley. How are you? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll take this here to start my IV. Hello. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Hello. <laughs> so, Jason's going to teach them how to start an IV. Do you want to sit? Hmm? Do you want to sit? You can see it. You can oh, sit. Oh, okay. Thank you. How are you feeling? I feel good. I'm looking at North Park Mall. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, let's go shopping. Nordstrom. We actually can go shopping after this. Yeah, you can. Really? Well, you got to sleep two hours. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Got Remember? Hour. You're not going to feel like shopping right after. You need your two hours. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, y'all look alike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like your father. We get that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. yeah, she looks like me. Yeah. She looks like her mom too. It's like mm. half dad, half mom. It depends on what day. It depends on what day you see her. Some days she looks a lot like me. Oh yeah. Really? And then some days she looks just like her mom. Mm -hmm. Literally half of my face looks like both of my parents. <laughs> <laughs> it's what you would expect. <laughs> so you you're leaving the itty bitty. Committee? Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, it's okay. Mm -hmm. We're not going extravagant. Hello. Hi. Say hi, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, depending on which arm Jason uses, depending on which arm I hold the camera with, I'll be. <laughs> Couple things I think are important about starting an IV. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is choosing a good location, and then kind of using just normal physics to do it. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it's a fluid, so you want to hang it down below your heart so there's less return, and less returns possible. I like to put them in your hand so I can access it real easy okay. if I need to. But the AC is a pretty common spot to start it. What I do is I have people squeeze their hand as fast and as often as possible for a few minutes. Sometimes I'll even have a patient rotate onto the arm that I'm doing it, mm -hmm. but you don't have to. Okay. Just, um, it's all about making sure we get blood to come past there. Some patients you need to put a really tight tourniquet on, but um, with her, she's got good veins, she's young. Her, the idea is that you allow arterial flow past the tourniquet and venous flow is obstructed um, up to it. So the veins will just get larger and larger and larger over time. This is one of the biggest concerns people have sometimes going into to surgery because they just get so nervous from the or from the uh, from the IVs. Uh, uh, so it looks like we've got some nice veins starting to pop up. Um, veins don't actually roll; they just aren't secured by people. It's something that people say a lot of time, almost as an excuse. Um, there's a couple of things that I do that I try to make the process as clean and as painless as possible, quick as possible, and a, like a one-time, like a one-time stick. Gotcha. One of them uh, uh, is I always wipe down. If you push blood up with one-way valves in them, the blood's gone forever. It's always gonna stay up there past that one-way one valve. Um, don't be afraid to wipe, and wipe vigorously. Also, this action does actually Make the make the vessels come up. So you got some nice ones starting to pop up. Okay. I also get everything ready before I start, so that once I get it, there's not a whole lot of um, not a whole lot of time trying to, to to secure it to the patient. Do I still clench my hands? Or do you... you can keep doing that the whole time. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and just relax. Let, oh, okay. let me. Yeah. Dad, you know I'm not scared of needles. Okay. So once I get a good blood return and good flush. What I do is I take it and put it above their heart, I pull the catheter out, I pop the tourniquet, and then you can kind of let go of it. If they're, if they're able to keep their hand above their heart, you will not get blood anywhere. So you have basically a 100% clean IV stick. A lot, of, a lot of people watching this video might have been in situations before where they, um, where there was blood around the, the vein right afterwards. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you can see, there's not. But yeah, it's in. Um, you can see a fluid dripping really easily. And that's what we want. There's some formulas that we use to make sure you get enough blood or enough fluid mm -hmm. during the case. Um, uh, the fluid is important uh, during the procedure to make sure um, and decrease your nausea and vomiting by as much as possible too as well as maintain your blood pressure, your urine output, so your kidneys, heart, and uh, uh, brain, liver, everything receives enough flow. Okay. A lot, and a lot of that begins with making sure you have enough fluid. Young, healthy patients, there's usually not a problem with. Okay. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, this is elective surgery, so we want to make sure that any risks are mitigated completely. Mm -hmm. Make a little loop out of this.
you know, I want you to, I want you to do something for me. And this is just important for patients to recognize that they can move their hands after they have an IV. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and I want you to do this. Okay, now down and left and right. So you can still move your hand. You don't yeah. have to be so nervous. Yeah. Okay. This is what we'll use to administer all the anesthesia drugs throughout the entire case. Um, I use drugs that are, um, you know, very strong. They work very fast, um, and some of them work for a long period of time, um, but they onset very quickly. Okay. Remember, the goal for you is zero pain and zero nausea and vomiting. Okay. This will not put you to sleep. This is like clear Gatorade that's oh. been sterilized. <laughs> Can I see your teeth? Open really wide. No problems moving your head or neck. Mm -hmm. I talked last night that you have no medical problems really. Do you no. have any other questions for me? No. Okay. I will pass a breathing tube in your throat that's about the size of your pinky. Okay. And go in after you go to sleep and it'll come out before you wake up. Okay. My goal for you is that you move over to the OR um, recovery room table mm -hmm. um, right after surgery. Mm -hmm. Dr. Collins will be in the room even. That's okay. how fast it is. Will it make my throat scratchy? Um, they say 5% of people do, but I think that that takes into account even people that are learning to do anesthesia. Okay. And then there are different positionings. Okay. So you're at the lowest risk. Plus I'm using a small um, a small tube. Mm -hmm. So you probably won't. I'm supposed to say 5% of the people do. Okay. If that happens, you can drink cool ice water and that'll make it go away. Okay, okay guys, my IV is in. I always feel, I feel weird with this IV in. This is not comfortable. Um, it's in and daddy oaks in right here. I have just um, been asked all of the necessary questions and then uh, just told about, like, not told. What's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Um, surgery was discussed with me, just surgery protocol. So. Um, I think in the next couple of like minutes or seconds here, I'm going to be taken in and I'm probably just going to check in with you guys in recovery. So this is the last time you guys will see me and my friends. In that vein, is any part of this outside of that educational realm and about the attention and getting the followers? No, not at all. I wanted to share this. It was always my intention to share this. I had no idea that it would gain this much traction, um, but this just gets it to more people so that it can educate, so that it can um, just get to those who are intrigued and who are interested. What do you say to uh, those who say, this shouldn't be going on in the doctor's office, it's, mm -hmm. it's inappropriate, and I've already had a, at least one of those conversations, so I'm not just pontificating. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like, you know, my doctor, my surgeon, she's open to it and the fact that she's okay with this lets me know that this is okay. Um, if she wasn't okay with this, sure. I would definitely say absolutely no, we cannot do this. But just having a surgeon and a doctor that is so kind and so gentle with me but also so open and willing to educate, I just think that that's, she is the, the reason why this is actually happening. Yeah. Well, and I think the other thing is, we're not necessarily trying to show the blood and the guts. That's not our point. Our point is simply to show, um, you know, what we do. And I think if we can kind of go through the steps of the surgery, educate people out there who may be, like Ashley said, intrigued by the surgery or who may be thinking about it, we can definitely allay any fears. We've gone from uh, Texas Women's University to here. How, how you doing? What do you think about all this? Well, first of all, I'm very proud of Ashley. Uh, she's, she's worked very hard to build her brand and she's done a, a fantastic job of sticking in there during some really tough times. You know, with any business you have your ups and downs, your ebbs and flows, and she hung in there. And uh, she got the degree to um, put some, some knowledge um, behind her practice. And, and so here we are today uh, with the augmentation. And I was, to be quite, quite uh, candid with you, a little concerned when she first mentioned it. Actually, that was some years ago. And I thought this would be a, 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 yeah, it's a fading interest. But no, she's obviously very committed to this. And here we are, and I'm very comfortable now because the good doctor here um, has, been, has made this a very comfortable experience for Ashley and for me. This is my first time meeting her. But um, it's been really good. I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased with, with actually her entire team and how they've worked with Ashley and made this a very comfortable experience for her. And as Ashley said, this is, the purpose of this is not um, for um, her, her personal 
um, uh, edification in terms of her business, but really just to show the world that um, that this procedure, it's, it's okay to have this procedure. Um, she's not doing anything that's outrageous. Uh, she will look very comfortable and very natural, and um, it really just enhances who she is. Say hello, Dr. Collins. Hey! <laughs> Father. Hey, hey. I'm in recovery, you guys. My throat's a little, just a little scratchy from the tube, but I've been looking. They look good. <laughs> and this is only about 20, 30 minutes. Um, after we finished with Ashley, so um, she's well on her way to recover. And I can hold the camera just fine, mm -hmm. not having any issues. The only thing is my skin is a little, hi. My skin is just a little tight, uh -huh. as to be expected. But it doesn't feel like they're huge. It feels pretty reasonable, so. And that's, remember, we always tell our patients, um, the tightness is normal because we just put implants underneath your muscle. So it almost feels like, let's say, you know, Ashley did 100 push-ups or like 100 bench presses because your, your pecs are what, what's tight. And that's why you'll notice in a little bit, we're gonna have Ashley moving her arms and that's actually what's gonna help with her recovery. And I kind of like want to move my arm. I can, Feel the urge. <laughs> yeah. Good. So that's the update. Hi, Jason. <laughs> she did wonderful. Thank you. I think it went well. I think it went very well. Okay. Yeah. Yay. I think it, I don't think the video was unseemly. It wasn't distasteful. Um, and and you look good. Yeah. Mm, okay. And I can move. I mean, the fact that I'm holding the camera is also mm -hmm. an indication that it wasn't bad at all. So I am still a little, a little groggy so um, I'm kind of like looking forward to going home and taking um, a nap especially because I stayed up to work I didn't like rest so I um, will check in with you guys when I get home hey okay, guys I'm up I am just taking my shower my doctor just called me before I hopped in the shower and she told me to um, Take a shower, eat something, and call her back. I'm actually not hungry. Like, I don't have a raging appetite right now. I have dinner plans with Brie and Crete at 7. 
and well I'm waiting for them to confirm that seven is okay with them the most difficult part of the procedure wasn't even the procedure itself I don't remember it at all um, it was the fact that there was a tube inserted down my throat and then taken out so I was asleep and was inserted and then before I woke up it was taken out but it made my throat um, a little scratchy I did take two Tylenol before the procedure and that has helped so so much with um, just recovering and I was numbed under uh, the fold of my breast so that has helped so much with my incision I feel no pain under there it's numb but they are saying that it will kind of slowly fade away um, just in time for me to not feel any excruciating pain under there so I can move my arms and I'm alert and I'm awake and I'm having conversations with people like it's not it hasn't like stopped my day or slowed me down this is like a regular Friday <laughs> for me I'm just editing I'm about to eat something go to dinner later so um, I'll check in with you guys later because I need to get this video up a that okay y'all say hi bubbles hey girl this is what I'm eating um I didn't have any food here that was kind of that sounded appetizing to me so I made a salad with spinach cucumber and carrot and I put my ginger dressing on top so I'm just having a bowl of this um, salads usually tend to fill me up and I don't have much of an appetite anyway so I looked in the fridge um, to get my pineapple but it's kind of dried up just a little bit so I'm probably going to juice it and I think my dad used the other half of it anyway for like his smoothie or his juice so that's fine I'm just going to um, have my salad and then I'm going to start getting ready for dinner hey guys so I'm out and about with my boo Hi. Tristan I wasn't vlogging for my birthday but Tris came all the way to Atlanta to help me celebrate so here are the girls uh, no bra, just boo. They look so good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They're swollen. So if they look big, it's just because they're swollen. They're actually not um, all that large. So, yeah. We're about to go inside and meet Brian Cree. So I will check in with you guys there.